Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Our Father, we are so very grateful to you, uh, so very grateful for the very unique privilege that you have granted us to participate in what you have chosen to bring upon the earth. In our generation, uh, and so very grateful. Particularly for this uh, Seiko 2021, mm. uh, right from the opening charge, uh, on Wednesday, uh, we can testify that your presence has accompanied us uh, so very closely, uh, so very powerfully, so very effectively. Uh, uh, various uh, uh, aspects of the meeting have been uh, very rich. Uh, there have been so many and yet all woven together by your own spirit that has led us. We want to thank you for the utterances you brought, uh, particularly in the messages that have been Giving us clear direction as to what you are saying and as to what you are doing. Uh, we cannot claim a right to any of these favors. And that's why, Lord, we really just want to tell you already we are overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the measure of mercy, of grace, of love, uh, of your kindness, uh, that you take thought so closely of us uh, that you have chosen to work with us to show and we want to tell you God that we are grateful uh, we are grateful for all of our brethren uh, the younger generation particularly that is gathered uh, all over the world in various centers in campuses uh, in, uh, some uh, meeting points in towns and villages uh, and in several countries of uh, this present world. Uh, who could have done this if not you alone, oh God? Uh, we are considering ourselves so very small uh, to be used of you for such great and mighty things. And uh, we are asking that please keep noting that uh, we are only standing around because we know you are the worker. We know only you who is capable of such things. Uh, you are available. And you are already engaged. Your commitment is not in doubt. We just want to first tell you we are very grateful. We are very grateful. Uh, who can we look to but you, oh God? We can't claim to know how to go uh, first because we have never uh, known how to go and secondly because this again is such uh, again freshly holy ground that uh, we can't stand on it in our, uh, in our own spiritual feet, uh, in our own spiritual we are asking that, oh God, you will be our strength, our source, you will come again and you will yourself speak to us as we speak through this uh, 
no kugini lenke chori wete we nya ebule gelu ka jagima ime na chinekai na ha jesus christ bonye wai amen it must have become very clear to you onye obola ni mai oga bi he doro ganya na de onwegi obunye na berede ki jiri we bi eba kama na obo chineke de onwe akporo gi bi ani na ode tu la ha gi ni he ni onwe a chori me one available and number two prepared uh, so that you can be eligible and uh, then even in this same moment he is pointing out to us uh, the way to our sustained and progressive preparation the way of discipleship is guiding us to know how to keep in as uh, we are recruited and envisioned so that our training, our instruction, our equipping uh, can continue uh, and uh, will can therefore be effective for you in life and in our ministry. Uh, we are aware also that uh, in this meeting, God is setting himself ready to shoot us out uh, to commission us. Uh, that's why it is go in this time uh, he's dealing with all that would hinder us from going and going to be very effective for him uh, so that he can then send us forth. Uh, I would like you to uh, not forget that uh, in the course of today, God has been emphasizing the matter of our loyalty to him. Our loyalty to him is of a very uh, important uh, uh, priority uh, for anyone who would trust with serving him. He will equip to stand for him. Uh, our leader, as he was sharing, he told us how uh, God confronted him uh, with the issue of his betraying, betraying of trust. Uh, and in the same way, whether very uh, well noted or whether not noted, that's his demand upon every life that would serve him. Many who may have ignored it, did ignore it to their own peril. They actually disqualified themselves. Even though God will have chosen to show them the mercy of recruiting them for his service. Uh, but it's not only because he abhors or hates betrayal of trust, but that it is in our being secured total loyalty to him. That we guarantee our availability for him, we guarantee our effectiveness also in living for him as opportunities present themselves on our path of service. Now, but for this uh, moment, uh, as we will be again going before him for uh, help in prayer, I would like for us to. Uh, look at a few, very few biblical instructions uh, that are dealing with uh, how we can overcome and set aside uh, and free ourselves from what would always normally constitute the obstacle to our being available to God. So if you like, we are saying, how can I set my life apart from God? 
Onye de were ndu yiche nye chineke. Buruko nye nano gide sike. I were ndu nye anaka. Buruko nye genwike. Buruko nye gabo. Ezi ngolo naka ya. Deka nga dendo. Now this is important. Kabi nye de okemba. Bihi na otu tu ni mai. I've even answered the call. To be born of God. And to be made available. Uh, as his children uh, 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 as we came to this sacred uh, the, the Lord is is I you the Lord is focusing on you the Lord is seeking that if you will be willing and you will be obedient you begin also to experience the same kind of victories that those who were ready and had the correct heart the experience in the hand of God as they followed their own Gideon. Now, I would like us to read uh, this Romans chapter 12 and uh, just the verses 1 and 2 uh, on which we will be uh, taking a moment to explore uh, some uh, basic issues that we must take very seriously in order to avoid the entanglement, avoid the distractions, avoid the setbacks that people experience even when they will have decided sincerely that they want to follow God. Uh, I would like us to uh, look at this very closely and we we'll praying that what we are going to discover here, God in his mercy, he will make it our very lives. He will cause us to step into it. He will uh, show us the step to take that we will be taking in prayer this evening in order to step into it and to begin to enjoy the benefit of living a life that God himself acknowledges he possesses and he can use. Now, in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, which I would like to read, the Bible said, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove so that you may come to clearly tell the difference between what the will of God is and whatever else is not his will. His will. You will prove what the will of God truly is. That it is what is good, it is what is acceptable, and it is what is perfect for every one of our lives. May the Lord grant the understanding of this a short passage of his word to our lives and make us partake us of the reality of it in our lives hereafter in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, very quickly... I want you to note that if this passage began by saying, I beseech you therefore, uh, it is because there was actually a background to this point uh, at which uh, this instruction is coming. Uh, it will have been very strange to start reading this passage. Uh, for our opening charge. But between Wednesday and Thursday, yesterday, uh, God has given each and every one of us the opportunity to encounter the transforming power of the cross of Jesus. God has given each of us the opportunity to take the decision to benefit from the sacrifice of Jesus upon the Cross, of 
I know there is so much glory in being a minister in a federal government, um, even if the country is only borrowing. Uh, has anything to boast about that they introduced you as the minister. It looks very glorious. Uh, I know there's so much glory uh, in being the ambassador of a country. And particularly if that country is a country that is a world power. If that country is a member of the United Nations Security Council. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to be introduced as the ambassador of such a country. But now here we are. Uh, we have the glory of representing the kingdom that rules over all. The kingdom by which all things came into existence. We are representing the king of glory. We are representing the Lord of Lords. We are representing the maker and the owner of all things. The possessor of all things visible and invisible. He who owns all the thrones and the dominions and the principalities and the powers. He who governs the beginning and the end. And who has himself no beginning and no end. We are his ambassadors. Where we stand, we are standing in his name. There can't be any greater glory than that. The glory of living to manifest God. Living to cause his kingdom to be established. Living for his will to be done. As it is done in the headquarters. In heaven. And uh, to step into the glory is what this verse, the first verse began to speak about. How do you step into the glory? Uh, you we recall the Bible said uh, for us to step into the glory and begin to enjoy a service that is worthy of God, a service that he can himself command, a service that is reasonable, a service that is, that is uh, a service worthy of the king of kings uh, and acceptable and a reasonable service. How do you step into it? How will your life begin to glorify God? How will you begin to live your life practically day by day in a victorious manner and be pleasing God with every decision you take? Be pleasing God with uh, every action uh, with every word you speak, uh, be glorifying God. Uh, here is the solution. 
Several of you who came to Christ uh, in the course of uh, this meeting or not too long ago, you are probably even wondering, will I start? Uh, I know when I go back there, my friends will start laughing and uh, laughing at me. I'm making just even of the decision that I have taken. Will I be able to make it? And will my life actually lead to glorify God? Now, it's not for you to be struggling with how you will arrange it. It is already arranged. Your life will glorify God. You will also go and give your mind that God is giving you in this meeting. And you will bring down whatever be the Midianites that were frustrating not only yourself but everybody around you. You will be a solution even to those friends who you are sharing with the just of you. They are going to benefit from this might you will be going with. Now but God has allowed you to work out. And as you were listening all through the day the first step to take is to decide to be all and all out and out for God. To decide that you are not going to plan to manage part of your life for anything else. To actually send yourself out to the Lord. Uh, the Bible says that uh, if we decide to love our lives and try to perhaps uh, make something out of our lives for ourselves, we will simply be losing the life. The life that if we invested, we cannot forever finish enjoying the dividend. A life that if you allowed it to be lost into God's own hand and into his own purpose, first he will cause you to be a wonder here on earth. And in heaven you will be enjoying the glory of the life of Christ that you will receive in exchange forever and ever and ever. And so, I realized the Bible said, therefore, now as far as you have already come, with as much as you have heard and you have understood, and particularly with the many decisions that you may already have taken, that you want to belong to God, and you have decided to hand over your life to him, you have decided that he should be the life in you. You have decided that it should no longer be you that is operating in this body, but it should be Christ that is alive in you. And that you will no longer live unto yourself. You will live unto him who died for you and rose again. Now, therefore, the Bible says, I am asking you to do one thing this evening uh, as we take this next necessary step to release ourselves completely to be holy available unto the Lord. The Bible said, I beseech you therefore, my brothers, my sisters, by the mercies of God, I'm using all the mercies God mobilized in order to send Jesus to make provision for you to become also a child of God. I am using appealing to all of his love and kindness uh, that pushed him to be able to so, uh, release his son into all that he needed to pass through. Uh, in order to deliver us. Uh, to the extent that he who knew no sin, he decided that he should be made sin for uh, our own benefit so that he can become the righteousness of his in Christ. Uh, he who in mercy, even 
Presenting yourself in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15, the Bible said, Jesus, he gave his life for us. He died for us to recruit us to become available unto God in the expectation that whoever benefits from this offer of salvation that he has given us, that none of us will again keep up living for ourselves, that we should never henceforth live unto ourselves or for our own but our lives Come and 
we are dead and now the life we have is with Christ in God since the one man died for us so that we all will know this death that we deliver us we don't have our own life to live for here anymore we have already crucified the life that was ours which life am I carrying here which life are you carrying where you are? The life you are carrying, the life I'm carrying is Christ Jesus. And because the life is Jesus, we cannot live except for Jesus. It will be like denying or going back on our agreement that Jesus is not just for now but for all eternity. I don't believe that anybody who is cross-checking the possibility of again wishing he could live for him because the self you wanted to live for is not entirely profitable to any of us and it could never have brought us into any glory. It's Christ in us that is the way of glory not only in this life, but also in that which is to come. So the first thing that we must separate our lives from and make that a very deliberate position that we have taken, a deliberate uh, attitude and a deliberate uh, you know, focus of life. Let it define who we are and what we live for is to be separated from living for ourselves to be separated from any imagination that we owe ourselves the duty of pleasing ourselves it was in Romans chapter 8 and verse 13 uh, I believe that the Bible said that uh, we don't owe any obligation uh, to our own flesh. That was the first. Uh, therefore, brethren, we are not debtors. Uh, we are, we are debtors, but never to the flesh to live after the flesh. We are only debtors to Jesus. We owe him our whole life. We owe him our Lord. We owe him our total loyalty. Uh, so to wish you could do anything for yourself is backsliding. It's uh, deciding to step back from your commitment uh, to live for God. Your commitment to please Him. Your commitment to be the kind of life in which He can operate to glorify Himself. The first thing we must deliberately decide that we are no longer going to be loyal to Him is our own very self, our flesh, as it is over also called. Now, if you step into discipleship relationship, you will have opportunity 
of learning and being guided, guided practically how to be aware of the usurping of the flesh, how to be aware of the subtle temptation of the enemy to make us to soft towards towards the flesh. You will come to know how to live your life conscious and uh, resistant to fall again into the bondage of the flesh. So in deciding to be secured from again walking in a manner as to the flesh, and to Na decide to for any reason serve his own purpose. Knowing this, that God abhors betrayal of trust. One area in which we betray God's trust is when he recruited us and we get the impression as if we have decided to be holy his. If for any reason we start doing anything that we are doing for our own self. But one of the questions we are answering immediately and quickly is that so how do you survive when you are no longer to concern yourself with yourself? Now, let me uh, uh, advise you uh, to pick uh, the book uh, that we have just uh, announced. Uh, I have almost read through most of it. And uh, I can recommend it for you uh, to be able to see in a practical way how you can walk and completely surrender to do what God wants, to be available to serve his purpose and his purpose only, and it will actually be wisdom for you. Uh, you will be in safer hands. Now, but as you read such practical accounts, uh, the story of my life that we have just announced, you are going to be touching not just that the Bible says, but here is where it suffering. is applied, Mama, and here is the to evidence of it. Uh, several of us can hear our brother witness and can testify behind him of our own lives uh, that God is able to keep any life that holy is him better than anybody could have imagined able to keep himself. And to uh, quickly tell you also that uh, when you uh, come to him, the basis of agreement is for you to mind his business, then he will mind your business. And when you agree and you are practically committed to it, and you are ready to wait on God to help you to live only for him, uh, you will be overwhelmed very soon with uh, all that God will do for you beyond what uh, any, any human on earth will have been able to do so well arranged for his life here on earth. You will just simply be covered on all angles and uh, on all ends. Uh, he is faithful. Now, but the question is, will you be faithful? To be faithful, you will need to say no to your flesh. No to service. No to worrying about your own keeping. Your own survival. Your own upkeep. Your own tomorrow. Worrying about how you can become something in this life. What can be bigger to become than to become a life that is carrying God himself. Can you be bigger than God? Can you be bigger than a life whose whose very uh, uh, intimate and intimate uh, being is actually God at work in a physical being. Uh, and this is what he offers us. Please don't let the concern of who you will become, uh, what you will eat, what you will wear, what you will drink, to be a distraction unto you. 
we are not going to press that so much more uh, knowing uh, we have a very short time but please note that in Matthew chapter 6 in Matthew chapter 6 now right Actually, an abuse of your life if you say you are in Christ and you are living to any living. Uh, you actually have really insulted the life you carry. No, uh, when you are now uh, one over reconciled again to God, redeemed by the blood of Jesus, it is so that your own living will be earned by God. And yet you will be very hard working, very active. Whatever your hands find to do, you are doing it with all your might. But you are knowing this, that you are doing this, so that in your day to day, going out and coming in, in your day to day activity, that God might be glorified. That men in it will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. It is not so that you can survive. It is God who will arrange what you should eat, what you should wear, what you should put on. Now, self should not claim that you owe him, any duty to run around for him. Please take this decision. You can't really be available for God if you are planning to be partly available for self. Now, I am shocked by the instruction Jesus brought in uh, Matthew chapter 6 when he said in caring about eh. what your own Jesus self will have been requesting as a basic human need. He wegi. said you are serving mammon. That to have to go is eh. to worry about Ma your own life. This is a, a truth I want you to allow to sink into your soul. That look, if you will be available to God, the first thing to know is that watching over yourself, your security, watching over your provisions, nourishing your life, arranging how you will go forward in life tomorrow, ceases to be your business. It becomes God's exclusive business. It's on his own exclusive list in our constitution in heaven. And it's only him that operates that particular section of the Constitution. So when you dare me to it, you are doubting his faithfulness. You are actually rebelling against his own commitment. You are beginning to query that he means what he says. It's an insult. Yesterday we saw that that amounts actually to your being a rebel. To your deciding to be his enemy. Enemy. May none of us choose to be enemies of God again. We've come through that before, but it's enough. So note this, that God will have each and every one of us to be separated from ourselves. But number two, before we come on to pray, uh, as we again we come back to that uh, Romans chapter 12, in verse 2, Ma, the Bible says, kabuo, be not conformed to this world. Now, 
I want you to note particularly, Acho I have also mara, been young, at least before I eh, came to this age mara, of over 60. I am aware that in youth, you feel so bad when they tell you eh, you are a Jew guy. When they tell you you are an old man, you are an old man, you are an old man, you are an old man. Nah. When they e tell you you are old school, si e, e when they tell you you are not keeping pace with your generation, when they tell you that you are not conforming to your world, and yet to be Mama, effective, effective and, to and to express God's glory and to enjoy life in Christ, I am not going to be each of us must take with all of our hearts. Never to be conformed to this world. My brother, my sister, I want you to decide that it was correct for you not to be conforming to the world. Not to be conforming to the way the world wants people to dress. Not to be conforming to the way the world is saying unless you have money, you don't actually have security in life. The way the world is saying that if you are not belonging to some of the new courts that don't look so courts, the courts of, of uh, perhaps uh, uh, human rights is a court uh, that is of the tradition of this world that does not come from God. Uh, the rights of the man, the whole duty of man, the expectation of a human being is to fear God and to obey his commandments. The enjoyment of a man, the liberty in the life of, of a man, if I will for a man begins with fearing God. But when the right of a human being, the liberty of a human being is being defined to be anything else, don't conform to this world. Will you take a decision today that you don't owe the world any any uh, 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 any, any resemblance to any of his own ideas. You don't owe the world any duty to conform to it. You have no obligation to the world to conform to it. Now, when I was yet growing up as a child of God in the 70s, and I, I stumbled on all uh, the on chapter 2, you know, that spoke from verse 11, how the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, how it teaches us uh, to say no to all unrighteousness and to all ungodliness and to operate uh, righteousness and godly in this present world. And I came down to verse 14 that he died for us so that he will reserve of himself a peculiar people who are zealous of good works. Well, one interpretation of that peculiar, the word peculiar, is that we are his own, exclusively his. Uh, but for me, uh, as a youth at the time, uh, it was very helpful to discover that it was normal for me if I am saved, and if the grace of God is doing correct work in my life, to be peculiar. So when the unbelievers on campus are trying to make jest of me that uh, I'm not wearing what we used to wear then, I would describe it for you, uh, of course it keeps changing. Uh, and that they are not making my hair like they are making at the time. Uh, and I remember that what, uh, it was normal for me to be peculiar. You know, for me, that word peculiar meant my not conforming was actually normal. In fact, if I were conforming, I should start asking myself if I'm doing well. As we have been praying, I just want you to decide this evening that you will be 
even ordinary go Nobody uh, will permit you to go picking it about all on the do. Odia, Adia, Chopa Yama, and Adia, Chopa Yamba. Now, so when you go to the hand of God, you need to be a good one. You are 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 a good one. the Send you. Would you like to pray? 
Ni 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 
we are speaking to you on behalf of us all. Not just those that have walked forward to the order. We are saying, if our service can only be reasonable, when nothing else is encroaching upon our lives. When there is no other master that is claiming right over us. When not even our own self is having any share of our life anymore. If our service can only be reasonable to the point we can even discern your will. We can know that once you have declared your will, we are not looking for anything else. That's what is good. That's what is acceptable. And that is what is perfect. There can't be any improvement on it. But to get here, you said we must release ourselves from the youth to be a living sacrifice. That whatever we are doing in life, it should be a sacrifice of the youth. You should be the only one consuming it. The only person who is gathering the profit of it. There should be nothing and no one else. That is the beneficiary on the side. Lord, we have come. And we are asking that not only for those that are kneeling in front, but the rest of us, including myself, so let it be with each one of our lives. For the time has come when, oh God, you must arise. When you must receive the due of those that are young, as myself in this regard. And when you can again rain and ask that your glory will shine forth in all the earth. We release it of our life. We release it in them afresh. Even those of us that have released it before, over and over again. Please look us over and check whatever may be polluting or corrupting the life that it was not acceptable unto you in any area whatsoever. Please, as we share this fellowship, let the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, your own soul, cleanse us, purify us from every impurity, from every imperfection, from every sin, from everything that could be an offense unto you. We commend our brethren, particularly who are kneeling now into your hands. Our leaders on site are going to yet speak with them, to encourage them, to guide them, and maybe even put some of the books we have talked about in their hands. We are asking that this decision they are taking it shall be permanent and they will be going forward ever. They will never know backsliding and they will never know growing cold in their release to live for you all the days of their lives until it pleases you to call them home because their own work upon the earth is accomplished. Thank you because this you will do to the praise of your glory. To you be glory and honor forever and ever for in Jesus' name we have Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.